In this module, we will discuss hydro turbo machines. It may be recalled that uh, hydro turbo machines or those turbo machines that uh, handle an incompressible fluid uh, such as uh, water or gasoline or kerosene or any other liquid. Uh, in the first part of this uh, module, we will discuss uh, uh, pumps uh, and in particular centrifugal pumps. And in the second part of this module, uh, we will discuss uh, hydraulic turbines. Now, as we have already seen uh, earlier, if we apply SFE to the rotor uh, of a turbo machine, uh, assuming no heat loss, we get this equation. We also neglect um, uh, elevation changes across the rotor between inlet and outlet. This is usually uh, negligibly small. So if we do that, we end up with this uh, expression. Now, keeping in mind the definition of specific enthalpy, which is uh, U plus PV, where V is the specific volume, uh, we may write this as U plus P over rho. For an incompressible liquid, rho is uh, practically a constant. So we may write uh, this term, the enthalpy change, uh, H2 minus H1, as P2 minus P1, if we assume that the uh, temperature of the fluid remains the same as it passes through the turbo machine. In other words, if you are looking at an incompressible fluid, uh, let's say a liquid, which is being pumped in a, in a uh, pump, or maybe even passing through a hydraulic turbine, and there is no significant change in the temperature of the fluid, and so there is no change uh, in the significant change in the internal energy of the fluid. So we may write H2 minus H1 as P2 minus P1 divided by rho. Okay. So if we substitute this here and uh, rearrange, we get the following P2 minus P1 over rho equal to V1 square minus P2 square over 2 minus Wx dot over m dot. Okay. Uh, Wx dot is the thermodynamic uh, 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 work or rate at which work is done in a thermodynamic sense. And this is uh, positive for a turbine and negative for a, a pump or a work absorbing machine. Uh, so we may rewrite this expression in the following manner, uh, gather P2 and V2 square over 2 on this side, P1 on this side, and then write it like this. So we may uh, write it like this, where the P here is the power uh, of the machine, and it is a positive number. Okay, So the sign is accounted for here. So the power is always a positive number, and uh, the negative sign is uh, chosen in case uh, it's a, a turbine and the positive sign is chosen in case it's a, a compressor or a pump that is a work absorbing or power absorbing machine. If it's a power producing machine, then the negative sign is chosen. We have also chosen to write M dot as the product of the density times the volume flow rate. So this is rho times Q. Uh, now, since the power itself uh, may be written as rho times G times Q times H, that's the hydraulic power, this term may be written as uh, the head H across the uh, turbo machine. So in case it's, uh, it's a centrifugal pump, the head increases across the uh, pump, that is P2 is more than P1, so there is an increase in head. In case it's a hydraulic turbine, the pressure decreases across the uh, rotor or runner, so the outlet pressure is less than the inlet pressure in that case. Okay, so this actually may be thought of as Bernoulli's equation applied across the rotor of a turbo machine that handles uh, liquids with Z2 minus Z1, uh, Z1 across the rotor being very, very small. Okay, so this is uh, an equation that uh, is used quite extensively in the analysis of both uh, uh, pumps as well as hydraulic uh, turbines. Uh, the brake horsepower of a turbo machine uh, is equal to the torque T times omega, where omega is the angular velocity. So uh, the brake horsepower is the shaft power that is generated by uh, the turbo machine in case it's a power producing machine, or it's a shaft power that is supplied to the turbo machine in case it's a power absorbing machine. So we can uh, define the efficiency of the overall efficiency of the turbo machine as the hydraulic power P divided by the brake horsepower. So this is either rho GQH divided by BHP for a power absorbing machine, or it is uh, BHP divided by rho GQH for a power generating machine like a turbine. Okay, so this is the definition of efficiency that we will use throughout. 
Now let us look at the particular case of a centrifugal pump. Okay. First, we will develop the theory and uh, develop <clears throat> certain theoretical expressions for uh, the performance parameters, do some calculations, and then compare the theoretical expressions and the theoretical characteristics against the actual characteristics of the centrifugal pump. Okay, so the blade element of a centrifugal pump looks like this. We have already uh, seen this earlier. Uh, so this is uh, a section or uh, taken at a certain uh, um, axial distance equal to constant in a centrifugal uh, impeller. Okay, so let's say at an x equal to constant section, and this is what the blade element looks like. Uh, this is the inlet. This is the exit. So the uh, angles are also marked here and the, the reference direction in this case is the radial direction because it's a radial machine so alpha one here is the angle that the absolute velocity makes with the reference direction and as shown here this is a negative quantity because it's in a clockwise direction the blade angle beta one as can be seen here it's in the uh, anti-clockwise direction so this is uh, positive and the same is true here also notice that u1 is not equal to u2 obviously because it's a radial machine so the basic idea here is given the geometric details of the impeller such as r1 r2 uh, beta1 beta2 and the width of the uh, rotor v1 and v2 at inlet and outlet and the angular speed omega we will derive theoretical expressions for the performance parameters of the pump and the performance parameters of the pump are the power that is absorbed by the pump and the head uh, change across the impeller, okay, or the head generated by the uh, impeller as functions of the volume flow rate, okay. So uh, the H versus Q and the P versus Q uh, are called the characteristic curves of the pump. So given these geometric details and the angular velocity, how do we relate H? To Q and how do we relate P to Q in a, a theoretical uh, manner is what we will uh, take up next. So uh, based on the velocity triangle shown, notice that uh, at any uh, r equal to uh, constant section, if you look at the velocity triangle, this is the radial component of velocity. Uh, C uh, one, uh, I'm sorry, C R one is equal to vr1 so the radial component of the relative velocity and the axial and the absolute velocity are equal and that is equal to this in this velocity triangle and it is equal to this in this velocity triangle so uh, the volume flow rate at any uh, radius r is nothing but uh, uh, or may be written as uh, q equal to vr times 2 pi r times b from which it follows that vr which is equal to cr may be written as q over 2 pi r times b now uh, it's also clear from here that the cr the radial component of velocity is equal to c times cosine beta 2 so i can replace the cr with c cosine beta 2 or c cosine beta at any radius r and write uh, c equal to q over 2 pi r b cosine beta now, it can, it's also clear from here that V theta at any radial location, which is this segment here, or this segment here, is equal to U minus C theta at any radius. So V theta equal to U minus C theta, which is equal to U minus C sine beta from the velocity triangle. So if I replace uh, C with this expression, I get V theta equal to this. Now, from the Euler turbo machinery equation, the uh, power is the is equal to rho times q times u times uh, v theta at outlet minus u times v theta at inlet. Notice that v theta one here is in the same direction as u one, and v theta two is in the same direction as u two here. So there is no change in direction of. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, v theta is in the same direction as u one here, and v theta is in the same direction as uh, u2 here so there is no change in direction uh, so there is no change in the sign of this term it, uh, it remains a negative sign so we may substitute for v theta from here uh, so v theta 2 is u2 minus q times tan beta 2 divided by 2 pi or 2 times b2 and similarly for v theta 1 
So this is the expression for power. Uh, if we divide this by rho GQ, then this is nothing but the head that is uh, generated by the impeller. So H is equal to P over rho GQ, which looks like this. Now, normally um, the impeller is designed uh, so that at a design point, which means design flow rate and a given value of uh, omega, the flow enters the impeller radially, which means alpha one is equal to zero. Alpha one is equal to zero, and it also follows that V theta one is equal to zero. So uh, we may write the flow rate at design condition like this. So if V theta one is equal to uh, zero, then uh, Q may be written in terms of U and the other quantities at the inlet using the fact that V theta one equal to zero. So Q star equal to two pi U one R one V one times cotangent of beta one. And the H, since this term goes to zero, H is equal to U2 over G times this term. And if I pull the U2 outside and use the fact that Q is given by this at design condition, I end up with an expression like this for H star. And P star is nothing but rho times G times Q star times H star. Okay. So, uh, so we set out to derive theoretical expressions connecting the head uh, produced by the machine with uh, Q and the power for the machine with Q. We have expressions like this at the design condition. We need to have uh, uh, expressions for all flow rates. Now, if we neglect V theta one at off design conditions, notice that V theta one will not be equal to zero at off design condition. Uh, blade angles beta one and beta two and omega R one R two are such that at a design point or design operating condition, V uh, theta one equal to zero or alpha one equal to zero. At all other condition, it will not be zero. But for the sake of uh, uh, Simplicity, if we simply neglect P theta 1 at off design conditions, then we may write H equal to this. So in this expression, we simply neglect this and we can write H in terms of Q like this and P also in terms of uh, Q. Of course, P is nothing but rho G times Q times H. Okay. So uh, now it is clear that this is the characteristic that we are looking for H as a function of Q. And it's clear from here that H is, uh, uh, is linear in Q and the sign depending upon the uh, exit angle beta 2, whether it is a falling characteristic or a rising characteristic or a constant characteristic depends upon the value for beta 2. So if you have beta 2 equal to 0, which means that it's a radial uh, blade at exit. So if beta 2 becomes equal to 0, then the tangent to the blade at exit uh, lines up with the radial direction. So it's a radial uh, blade. That means if beta 2 is 0, H is a constant for all values of Q equal to U2 square over G. Now, if beta 2 is less than 0, then we have a forward curved blade. And in this case, uh, this is uh, negative. So this becomes positive. So this is a rising characteristic. It increases linearly with Q. And if beta two is greater than zero, then we have a backward curved blade and this is positive. So H actually decreases with Q. So this is a falling characteristic. So let us see how we get this uh, connotation from here. So we can see here that if it's a radial blade, then the blade actually must look like this because beta two is radial at the exit zero. It has to be radial at inlet also. That's the way it is going to be for the radial blade. And if the blade is radial, then the H is a constant. And the power varies, increases linearly with uh, Q, flow rate Q. That is what we are seeing here. Now, uh, in the case of a, a forward curving blade, remember forward curving refers to the fact that the blade curves in the direction of rotation of the impeller. So since the impeller rotates like this, the blade also curves in this direction. So in this case, the blade angle beta 2 is actually in the clockwise direction. So it is negative, which is why we say it is a forward curving blade. So if it is forward curving, beta 2 is negative and uh, head increases. It's a rising characteristic. H increases with Q. 
Now, in case it's a backward curving blade like this, it's against the direction of rotation. Beta 2 is in the counterclockwise direction and is positive. So, this is a falling characteristic here. And the pressure increases, I'm sorry, the power increases, reaches a maximum, and then uh, starts to decrease. That is the theoretical characteristics. Uh, these are the theoretical characteristics for the uh, centrifugal pump impeller. Okay, we have, we have made many simplifications. Most notably, we have assumed that V theta 1 is 0 at all conditions, which is, uh, which is not a very good assumption to make. But this gives us some insights on the general trends to be expected from various types of impellers. Now, before we proceed to see uh, the actual characteristic uh, of a centrifugal pump, let us work out an example. So we have taken this example from Fox and McDonald, Fox, McDonald and Pritchard. Uh, so the geometric details of the blade are given, radius at inlet and outlet, blade width at inlet and outlet, blade angle at inlet and outlet, omega is also given. We are asked to calculate the theoretical head, theoretical power and flow rate and the design operating condition and the same quantities at the different flow rate of uh, 3600 meter cube per hour. Okay. So, from the given data, we may evaluate the blade speed at the inlet and outlet U1 as 2 pi n R1 over 60, which comes out to be 9.817 meter per second, and U2 as U1 times R2 over R1, and it comes out to be 32.73 meter per second. So, at the design point, Q star is given as 2 pi U1 R1 V1 cotangent beta 1. So, if we substitute the known values into this, we get Q star to be 0 0.3045 meter cube per second. And the design <coughs> H is also known. So, H star is given by this expression. And if we substitute the numbers, this comes out to be 101.32 meters. And the power required at the design operating condition is simply rho times G times Q star times H star. And that comes out to be 302.66 kilowatts. We are also asked to calculate the shutoff head. The shutoff head is simply nothing but the head that is generated uh, by the machine at zero flow rate. So that is this quantity here. So if you look at this expression, we said Q equal to zero. So the shutoff head is nothing but U2 square over G. And uh, this comes out to be 109.17 meter. Next, we are asked to calculate head and power input for a flow rate of 3600 meter cube per hour, which corresponds to 1 meter cube per second. So, we uh, substitute this into the general uh, expression for H. Notice that we have neglected V theta 1. So, if you substitute this into the expression for H, uh, the given flow rate is 1 meter cube per second, and we get the head to be 83.4 meters and the power to be 818.154 kilowatts corresponding to this case. 